Hello and welcome everybody. I'm Kimball Hooker and we're here on the Kimball Hooker Show. We're at KCAT Radio and you can check out our podcast here, Kimball.show. We have a special guest here today. This man has played a lot in the area and abroad and we're going to get into that. But the first thing I want to say, I want to talk about one thing. You know, when you're when you're trying to build something, I'd like for people to understand the circle of people that you surround yourself around is so important. Absolutely. Because negativity is not a good thing when you're trying to build positivity. So just understand that, you know, a lot of times you, when you're building something, you might have to build it and it might take time, but the people that you surround yourself around, you need positive people. People that when they see you, their eyes light up and it's like one big happy family i agree with you so much hard to find but keep looking that's i'm with you 100 you know i have a big band right right, right. and uh, i chose pretty carefully i mean we band's been together 22 years and uh many of the guys have been in the band longer than 15 years oh my goodness so you know we have a good thing sometimes we fight like brothers but <laughs> but we're good people who care about each other right and we built something that we're all proud of so i can't agree with you more good people I, w I would take a, a good guy who's a, a good player over a great player who's a bad guy. I love it. You, can you repeat that? I would take a good guy who's a good player over a great player who's a bad guy. All right, for everybody that's listening, <laughs> I want to introduce my friend and ex music extraordinaire, Mr. Paul Kent of the House Rockers. Thanks, Kimball. So that everybody knows who we're talking to and what we're talking about. Thank you. I want to know about your musical, your, the beginnings, and then take us through today. But for now, how did how did you get started into the music industry? Well, the, the industry, so I put the guitar down for a while, started working, raising a family like many people do, and then my wife gave me a guitar. You used to play, right? And I, yeah, she gave me a guitar, and you know, you get the bug. And I played by myself for a couple of years, and then I really wanted to, you know, music, the team sport, right? I, right? I wanted to get some people together. So got some guys together. We started playing at a little practice place for about a year, and then, you know, it just grows how much you want to do it. Right. And, uh, and so uh, I, I knew what type of band I wanted to do, I wanted to put together, and uh, I put together a big band. It's been a 10-piece band the whole time. Oh, wow. I mean, that was the vision I had for it in the beginning. When you say 10-piece, consisting of what are the... Five horns. Oh, a five-piece horn section. Yeah, two, okay. two trumpets, baritone sax, other guy plays tenor, alto, and flute, and a, tr a trombone player. Two guitars, bass, drums, and keys. Oh, my gosh. All right. Yep. And, uh, you know, we played. Uh, the house rockers were formed. Uh, you know, we banged around trying to get some gigs. And, and, you know, you'll laugh at this, but originally, I'm from New York originally. Okay. And the music I grew up with is a little bit different than the music that came out here. I moved out here in, in the middle, middle school age. What, what years are we talking um, I moved out here in 74. Okay, all, all right, right, cool. And, um, but spent most of the summers of the 70s going back to visit family and friends, and so I was still quite you know, connected to New York. And uh, you know, the music of the Eastern Seaboard was kind of what I grew up with, in, especially in high school years. And that's the music I heard in my head that I wanted to play. What groups are we talking about? Well, I, I'm a huge Springsteen fan, so that would be the oh, first, okay. first place we go. But there, there's a really famous group in the East Coast in New Jersey, Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes, okay. which is a five-piece horn section band. And you know they uh, have that blend of they created something called the Asbury Sound, Asbury Park Sound, which was kind of blue-eyed soul with a nod towards you know some serious blues and some serious stacks and some Motown stuff, and nice. meld it all together. And that was the music I had. But you come to California and you say you want to have a horn band, and everybody asks you one question: Do you play Tower of Power? <laughs> of course, right? <laughs> right. And so you know I love Tower of Power, and you know it's thrilling music and it's really fun to play. But I just grew up with something that was just a little bit different. So I put together this band, you know, got this horn section, rhythm section, had a bunch of horn charts done. And we started playing some Asbury Jukes music, and people were applied about it, but it wasn't really connecting. And then as time goes on, you know, the band kind of evolved. I kind of gave up that vision a little bit. Again, cover music, right? Uh, I gave up that vision a little bit. And then we, I, I fortunately, about five years into the band, uh, our chord player joined and he was a game changer. Ma his name's Nick Shargan, amazing musician. And he's a blue eyed soul singer. So, you know, I got, I got a guy now who's singing Earth, Wind and Fire and Bruno wow. Mars and, you know, that yeah, type of stuff. Good stuff. And all of a sudden, we could start booking a lot more things, right? right so, right. so I held on to some of the rock stuff, and we added horn arrangements to the rock stuff, and then, 
and that's why we say rock and soul. So, so I sing rock stuff, Nick sings the soul stuff, uh, Simon, our other guitar player, does a little bit of everything. Uh, and it's just a very interesting repertoire. There's really something for everybody when we play. And we meld it all together. We don't try to sound exactly like a record. We sound like us. Right. You know? And uh, we have a lot of fun. It's a bunch of good guys, like I said. And I think the fun we have is a big reason why the band has gone on for so long. Wow. So it's just very infectious. 22 years. 22 years? 22 years. How many of those guys are like from the old days and how many are new? So this is the beginning of the 22nd year. Uh, three of the horns started in year one. So the first year, well, like I said, was just in a, a rehearsal studio. None of those guys are around. But three of the horns, when I started a horn section, the original horns, so they're 21 years. Nick, my keyboard player, is 15. This will be his 16th year. Our other guitar player, just celebrated his 10th year. Oh my goodness. Yeah, so we've been at it for a long time with a great core of dedicated people. And you know, once you kind of get going and people start like, oh, you know, your band is, you know, that's infectious, right. makes you kind of want to stick with it. So, right. yeah, so it's been a great run. We're just, uh, you know, I've been booking for this coming summer, 2022, and we're almost fully booked you do, for the year. You do all the booking? I do everything. Oh, wow, man of many talents. I do it all. Wow. Yeah, yeah. so uh, I, the band is going to have another great summer. I mean, COVID got in the way of a lot of stuff, right? True. But we didn't see each other for a year, and the, the test was we got back together and we picked it right up. You know, a couple of rehearsals, and we were we were pretty ready to go. Question for you. How does a 10-piece band stay sane? It, that's a good question. I, th there's a few different ways I answered. I mean, I had to learn as a leader of a band to give the rope up a little bit. Oh, okay. Pick the battles that were really important to me, to, you know, what hill I was really willing to die on. Okay. It took me a while, like I said, for, for a repertoire, I kinda wanna wanted to do something different than everybody was doing. And in cover music, different isn't always better, you know? That's true. People like to hear what they like to hear. Right. Right? And, you know, sure enough, once we adapted, you know, I keep some, you know, I got a couple Springsteen songs in our set that make me very happy, mm -hmm. but it's not a whole show of it. And, um, the success kind of speaks for itself. I mean, you get you get to a point where when you ask about how do you keep it sane, you get to a point where would you rather keep the ship moving forward, or would you rather stop and risk you know lose some guys? Like you know what's more important? And right. you know you you learn to make those decisions many times along the way. Right. And you got to give a little bit. You got to encourage people's artistic visions a little bit. You got to encourage people, you know, make them feel like they're part of a team. I can see that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it's, it's, a, it's all those types of things. You share the spotlight. You know, it was very important to me. The other thing about being, you know, from where I'm, where I grew up, you knew the band. You knew everybody's name in the band. You know, if you were a, even the local amateur bands or semi-pro bands, you know, you knew the guitar player, the bass player, the drummer. Right. You know, so uh, there's never been a gig where I don't introduce the band. There's uh uh, social media, you know, every guy's birthday, I, you know, make sure that people know it's that That's guy's good. birthday. You know, Acknowledge just, the, the band members. It is. So, right. you know, I, I spend a lot of time very consciously wanting people to know our band. Right. And that makes them feel connected. Now, let me ask you this. Inside of a 10-piece band, are you guys just bandmates or are you guys actually friends? Different degrees of different, different people. I mean, I, I'll hear about a couple of guys, you know, doing a gig together that I, you know, didn't know about or a couple of guys going out to a movie or something like that. That's always cool to me. I, uh, some guys are closer than other guys. Right, right. Okay. Some guys it's work. You know, you show up and go to work. Half the guys in the band are full time musicians, so they they teach during the day, and they gig at night, and they cobble They're together serious. a living. Yeah. They're musicians. Yeah. And you know, th those have been some of the most inspiring conversations. You know, they they were guys who knew at a fairly early age this is what they were meant to do. They were willing to make a decision living in Silicon Valley that they were going to pursue their art. You know their passion, right? As which is a hard move. You know, it's a hard path. Gigging to take. money is hard. A right? Absolutely, not yeah. easy to live on. Not easy to not live in on. These, not in these days and in, in this, this area. Place. That's right. Absolutely. That's right. So in this area, I mean, where about do you play? What kind of shows do you do? Like weddings? Do you guys do like concerts? What, yeah. What, what do you do? So ten piece band, we don't fit in a lot of places. Right. right? I would imagine. Yep. And uh, some of the places we play in the winter time, we do some clubs. But it looks like a clown car when you pack ten guys. Into it. Like if you've been inside Charlie's, <laughs> course, yeah. the crow's nest, right? Put a ten-piece band. On it. I mean, it's right, it's, right, right. That's crazy. Yeah, but you know, that's where the gigs are in the winter, right? Uh, well, we get private gigs. We get our share of uh, corporate, you know, events and that type of thing. And then where our real bread and butter is all these civic concert series that go on through the summer festivals. Although festivals are a different kind of problem because 
typically in festivals there's multiple bands mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of time to switch it over and we got a lot of guys to switch over i can i can see that right yes so we prefer those concert series where it's all us you know it's usually our sound system so we know what's going on you have your own absolutely oh, okay yeah we invested uh several years ago right and we have our own sound engineer bill who's you know nice takes care of the band in so many ways so nice shout out to bill right 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 <laughs> right, right, right right okay and then as far as like um, do you guys have any formal training? Um, any some of the, the guys band? are, you know, full-time musicians. Some of the guys are self-taught. I'm well. I guess you know. I started playing guitar. Uh, I had a fall when I was ten years old playing basketball and was laid up for about eight months. Oh wow! Knee, knee operation. Wow. And was making my mom crazy. And so she put me in music lessons, and that's how I got started. Right. Uh, so I guess I have the foundation. Probably about six, seven years of of, uh, of guitar lessons. <gasps> okay. And vocal okay. lessons. Yeah. Uh, but some of the guys, especially the ones who teach, uh -huh. you know, some of them are, are degreed and, you know, and some of the guys are uh, self-taught. So all different levels. Right, you know. right. What is your home instrument? My, I'm a guitar player. You're a guitar player? I'm a guitar player. Are you versatile? You play keys? Are you? I don't play keys. I mean, I can, I can chord my way around, right. you know, but uh, I don't, I wouldn't perform playing keys. I play acoustic guitar. You know, I have a pretty vibrant acoustic life where I play Singer songwriter type stuff. Oh, that's cool. As solo, yeah, and uh, and then the band, of course, is electric guitar. Right. You know what? When I looked you up on on YouTube, right, and I looked you guys up, the energy is just electric. Seriously, I, I mean, I'm, I'm watching it. And I'm just like, wow. I'm consumed. I'm like, you know, the people in the room are saying, turn that off. You've been in there too long. Watch it in the park. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know any other way. And the music that I choose, you know, I we, like that because you know what? A lot of people they 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 feel the energy that you're giving them, I right? Hope so. You yeah. never know where people came from as yeah. far as like, they could have, uh, you know, had some incidents before they got to see, to, to see you, yeah. you know what I mean? They could have had a hard time with, with their relationship. They could have been laid off at their job. They could have, anything happens. That's how I always when, try to kind of mentally look at when it. When we do that little huddle sometimes before, before a you gig, know. you know, it's all about, you know, give somebody a two hour vacation, set there everything else aside, come right. spend the time with us. That's all we're gonna do is have fun for a couple hours. And right. that's, Really, the vibe of the band. That's the vibe so, of the band. Happy. You know, it's funny. We have yeah. a couple of slow songs. Uh -huh. It's hard to place them in our sets because you know the energy starts going. So you know, we'll do like, you know, you know, a good, good slow song would be my my buddy Nick, my keyboard player. He sings the heck out of "Let's Get It On." Right? Oh, but that that serves a lot, man, because everybody day. feels "Let's Get It On." Yeah, you know, in a very deep way. So even if you're at, you know playing at a at a pace of 11 out of 10 all night, you can you can bring out some Marvin Gaye and, right. and people will appreciate that moment. So, that's cool. but it's hard to put slow songs into our set because it is you know pretty. Uh, right, right, right. Yeah. So it's nonstop action then. That's our, that's the goal. That's the goal. Right, right. You guys do weddings. We do weddings in places where they can fit us. We probably do maybe four or five, six weddings a year. Gotcha. Um, we've played a lot of friends' weddings or friends' kids' weddings by now. Nice. You know, which is is nice. Uh, I would say the most rewarding one I've gotten to play two or three weddings of uh, friends of my, who my daughter went to high school with. Right. So they grew up coming to see the band and when they got married to think of us, you know, playing older music that they wanted that vibe at their wedding, that's always really rewarding. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, that's great. cool. Right, right, right. Tell me, what are some of your most memorable gigs? Or Ooh. even some of your most awful gigs that like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that just happened. That's a great question. So, you know, we uh, created a gig uh, called the Los Gatos Park Dance out at a, an, uh, Oak Meadow Park in Los Gatos, which okay. is a beautiful, big, open park. I'd been going there for years thinking, this is you know awesome. And actually, uh, Oak Meadow hosted, uh, in a year after the earthquake, when Earth, Wind & Fire couldn't do a gig up at the mountain winery, they moved it to Oak Meadow Park. There was actually Earth, Wind & Fire in Los Gatos, right? Wow. Um, it's just a gorgeous thing. And I always thought, you know, for my community, what a great way to put, well, we, we put a, together a show we would get five, 6,000 people coming out, you know, oh, wow. bringing blankets, bringing lawn chairs. And so those have been some of the most memorable. Um, a woman who helped me start that, her Sharon Childs, um, she was ill one year and couldn't attend. And we got 5,000 people to hold up a lighter for her and, and wish her well. And oh, you know, nice. it was a very emotional moment. So I, that would be close to the top of-, uh, of That's pretty memorable right there. Absolutely yeah, emotional, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, worse gigs, Bad gigs for us are usually when we don't have time to get comfortable and get set. So that's what I'm saying. Those, okay. those, those festivals are, are nerve wracking. No time. 20 minutes to get a 10 piece band up, it's plugged in, impossible. sound checked, almost impossible, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, it's funny, we had a really long run of great gigs. 
And I was driving back from one, it was actually the, the last of this run was up in Vacaville. So we, we have a long drive down and I'm driving with my keyboard player and I'm like, you know what? We've been butter for a long time. Right. We have just, it's been really great. He goes, yep, yep, we have. Sure enough, next gig, we could not get settled. It was really hot out. The band was marginal at best, you know, just right. didn't have the energy because it was beating down sun and didn't have time to get set up. And so I jinxed us. And so, and that was just last summer. Right. But we're pretty consistent. Pretty you know? consistent, huh? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, we add ma new material as often as we can. And uh, the amount of time we have to get the 10 guys together to polish it up and get it ready to play can be different. Sometimes we'll, we'll bring a song out before it's really ready but it's pretty ready. You know, we're probably the only ones who really know. But, right, of course. But it's not where we want it to be, right? Right. So, we, you know, we might bump on a song or two, but whole shows that don't go well, I, I gotta say, it's been, it's been a while since we've had a, like a, a real downer. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna take a quick break. I'm here, I'm here with my special guest, Mr. Paul Kent with the House Rockers. You're listening to the Kimball Hooker Dot Show. Check us out on our podcast. We're here in Montessorino, Las Gatas. We're gonna take a 15 minute break. We'll be right back. Thank you to the city of Montessorino for their continued support of KCAT Public Media. The city of Montessorino has enabled KCAT to inspire, educate, entertain, and inform our community through the magic of television and digital media for over 38 years. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Kimball Hooker Show. We're here in Los Gatos, Montessorino with my special guest, Mr. Paul Kent. Sir, I have to ask you, where where are you located as far as like all your contacts? You know, like, is there a website? Is there? Oh, yeah, yeah. What, talk yeah, to us. Yeah, so uh, the House Rockers website is www.sv, like Silicon Valley, svhouserockers.com, okay? And uh, we have a pretty big presence on Facebook, which is just House Rockers. So facebook.com slash House Rockers. We're also on Instagram, same thing, House Rockers. But um, you know, we have a pretty vibrant presence on Facebook. A lot of you know fans will chatter about cool. about gigs and you know YouTube. Well, oh yeah, we are, we do have a YouTube channel as well. You can find us. On, I don't remember the address, but you can definitely find us. You know, some some live gig clips live there. But most of our social media is is, uh, is Facebook. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. So they can subscribe. You can you can become uh, yeah and get notif notifications when things come right, up. Right so. for upcoming events and things Absolutely. like that. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Is there anything anything in particular this weekend you want to share with us? Well, I'll tell you a couple things. So uh, I'm playing solo this weekend. So tonight, you know the uh, what's the date today? Twenty twenty eight. Twenty eight. Uh, I'm doing a solo gig here in town in Los Gatos at uh, Los Gatos Coffee Roasting. Tomorrow night I'll do a solo gig at Chaminade in Santa Cruz. Sunday, I'll do a solo gig down in um, Gilroy at Verde Vineyards. But the band just announced a really cool thing today. So the great downtown Las Gatas Club Charlie's is going to be reopening. Really? On the 26th of February, we will be playing that grand opening party. So you will get to see us crammed into that little tiny stage. Now, is that there. the 10-piece? That's the only way. You, you see the house rockers you're playing, it will only be the 10-piece band. You see, we never break it down. We never only take three of the five horns. The House Rockers are a 10-piece band. You'll always see us as a 10-piece. You know what? I like that because some people do what you just said, though. They will break a band down. Yeah. They'll say, well, you know, six of us will go or four of us will go. Or yeah. We'll only be bringing, like, the, the percussion. or those. And you, that's it. Yeah. You'll do a solo gig, but you won't break the band down. Yeah, and the solo gigs are Paul ten. Kent, you know, not the House Rockers. Not house you rockers. see the House Rockers, I just always thought it was a good thing that that's our brand. It should always be the same. I like that. You know, I, I, I've got some spectacular performers in my band and uh, they have their own fans how would you feel if you were a fan you show up and that guy's not there and then you never know if, who's going to be there right? right so right. to me it was consistency for our brand was a very important thing to do so it's always a 10 piece band and it's pretty much always the same 10 guys I mean every once in a while something will happen and you like know, sub or something yeah I'll, I'll sub a horn player every once in a while but it's been a long time since I've had to because we really? play so much you know we fill up the calendar um, I don't sub the rhythm section really because um, there's just too much in, you know the, the horn the horn players are on charts and so oh yeah I can right. get I can get a good guy you know good pro guy to read down the chart but the rhythm you know is, is detached from charts and so uh, it's it's pretty rare that we'll sub almost never that we'll sub a, a rhythm section player okay so I have to ask this mm -hmm. I'm a musician yeah but I have to ask okay so you have a 10 piece uh, band right mm -hmm. okay now I have to ask this because some people do and some people don't 
do you guys ever play to track? We don't. Uh, uh, we don't play to track. We don't play to click. We've had good drummers. We haven't had to play to click. But we don't. We don't fill that in, um, like string parts or you know whatever. I, we have a lot of guys that make a lot of noise, and so you know we, there's not a lot of space to fill that a track would do. We don't. We we try to give a good, authentically live experience. I'm not not that so it's all wrong. live. It's all, it's all live. yeah yeah. You know we have a really inventive keyboard player who covers a lot of ground with a lot of patches and a lot of sounds, and you know that that'll help. Um, drummer uses analog acoustic drums, and so mm -hmm. you know there's no triggers or anything like that. But uh, yeah, you know we try to create the music we are we are trying to create. I you know I've seen people perform with tracks that sounds beautiful and nothing wrong with it. It's just not our, our thing. Not your thing. Okay, yeah, yeah. got it. I, do you know why I asked that? Because I saw um oh my was it Foreverland? The 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 yeah the trip the Michael Jackson tribute. Yeah. And some of that I had noticed was like live, but some of it was, you know, uh, triggered and things like that. And it's like, wow, that's that's amazing that you'd have that many people but still incorporate, you know, maybe in the yeah. ears, right? The in ears, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's, it's, uh, the reason why I paid that some attention is because, number one, I'm a musician. Mm -hmm. And when I see the, 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 the band work in a big setting, like yeah. a beach or something, because like, I saw them at the beach. And it's like, I'm like, wow, this is crazy. Like, you have so many people doing so many different things as percussionists. You got drummers, you got horn players, you got yeah. singers, dancers, and all that. And then you see someone with head headphones is like the big signature to me, like, Okay, there's something else going on. Yep, I don't absolutely. know where it is. I don't know what it is. I got to figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Right? No, I mean, we, um, the guy who writes our horn charts is a great arranger. He's our baritone sax player, John Hassan. And he writes some very luscious, gorgeous orchestral horn arrangements oh, that, nice. that sometimes take the place of, of string arrangements. And we add horns to a lot of places where there weren't, and you know, we add horns to, uh, Boys are back in town by Thin Lizzy. Remember of course, that song? Oh, well, absolutely. No horns in that band, right? Right. But but John wrote this chart. Said you got you know let's try this out, and it was, and that's kind of one of the things that people come to see us for is what we're going to do with different types of things. Uh, we put together uh, a mashup of Jungle Boogie and Frankenstein. I'd love to hear that. Right. So Frankenstein Edgar Winter Band. Right. Jungle Boogie. Right. right of course. Mashed them up. Wow. Right? And you know, like I said, we got ten guys. Covering a lot I'd love of to hear space. That one. <laughs> <laughs> Is that online? Uh, it might be online. I don't know. I've looked for it a while. So it was one of those, you know, let's see if we can do it type of things. And, you know, it's kind of cool. But no, we don't use tracks. We, we have, we make a lot of sound and uh, we adapt to what we are. And again, good keyboard player who gets a lot of different sounds out of his rig. So, you know, sometimes some triggers, you know, like, uh, for example, some of the Bruno Mars stuff you do it has a real trigger drum sound, right? Right. So it, he will double the drummer hitting a snare mm -hmm. by hitting something that's kind of a, a the trigger sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. So sometimes, not a lot, that's not a big part of what we do. Classic rock, there's not a, a real need for a lot of that mm -hmm. stuff. Some of the really high, like we have, you know, hit our head against the wall. We tried to do um, Suit and Tie by Justin Timberlake. Okay. Some of that really produced studio sounding stuff is is hard, you know, to bring out. A, you gotta have great singers to do that type of stuff. That, that too, N No, course. No mercy on that stuff, right? right? But, um, with some of the produced sound of those songs that people used to hear on the radio, as we try to do that, sometimes it doesn't work out with our instrumentation, right? And, you know, our chops. So at that is, is it, at that point, is it a, dec a decision of you leave it out and move on? Different, you... Depends on the song. Sometimes we'll try it and mm -hmm. see how it goes, and you know, see if we're on the right track and people right. are connecting to it. Sometimes we know, and sometimes we're wrong. Sometimes we think we know, <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> and it's right. not the right thing. Trial and error. Yeah. You mentioned something early about TLP, uh, Tower Power. Mm -hmm. um, question for you: Have you guys ever attempted to do like a Tower Power song? We do with all many those Tower Power songs. Really? You know, what is hip is the one people ask for the most, uh -huh. right? Still a young man. You know, we got trumpets who can handle those crazy high parts. Uh -huh. You know, so so still a young man is is going to do down at the nightclub. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, squib kicks. Okay. You know? Yeah. Okay. So we probably have you know maybe a dozen, ten or a dozen you know tower songs that we pull out. Um, it's definitely a certain vibe. And some people have to hear it. Some people ask us to hear play Request. Chicago. You know, really? would be the other horn band a lot of people grew up with was Chicago, right? We actually don't have any Chicago in our repertoire. Interesting. Even though I'm asked quite a bit. So do you? What, what happens when you get like a like a special request? Um. Uh, it depends on the request. I mean, again, if we, if we, it depends on the vibe and what's going on with the gig. Right. I mean, if the gig's going good and we can take a chance on one that we don't really know. You know, I, I'll ask around the band, you know, on stage, you guys know this one. Everybody, <laughs> everybody nods and says this. Sometimes we'll take a flyer on it and, you know, but we'll be like, hey, you know, we're going to try this one. If it's not good, 
remember the last song we did, which was really good. <laughs> Let's hold on to that one. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. You know what's so funny about that is sometimes you can do it and people don't even know yeah. that you didn't know the song. That's right. And they think you're just like, yeah, just like at rehearsal, guys, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I won't always broadcast it that we're setting ourselves up for failure. And it kind of depends on the vibe and stuff. But we always, you know, we're there to make people happy. Right. You know, the funny thing about requests is sometimes that request is only useful to the one person requesting it. Like nobody else in the crowd no, no, really care that. about that. Yeah. You got to make a decision whether, whether you want to, you know, and it all depends on the vibe of what's going on or, you know, the way the person makes the request. That's true. I can totally see that. You know, sometimes I've had that happen as well, you know, so I can relate, totally yeah, relate yeah. to that. It's like, hmm. I even like that song, but they don't. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yep. Yeah. So sometimes you got to talk them on down off the ledge. And, yeah. Or maybe on a break, you go over to their table and play them a couple of verses of something. Right. That can, right. That can do it for them. So now, do you guys play just here in town, local, or you guys play abroad? I mean, you guys play out of the state, in or no? We've never been out of the state. Okay. And uh, the bulk of our our work is in the South Bay area down here in the oh, San Jose okay. area. We have a good audience that we built in the East Bay, so we'll, we'll play out in Pleasanton, Dublin. We're gonna do the Walnut Creek Art and Wine Festival this year. We do Moraga's uh, 4th of July. I know people all over the world can hear this, so you know it is Bay Area in general. Our band is based in the South, the San Jose area, but we'll go about 50 miles in different directions for a lot of things. Uh, we just got our first gig out in Jackson, California, out in, the, out in the gold country, so that's about two hours away. Jackson, is that like Rancheria? Exactly. Is that the casino? Exactly, yep. Oh, I just got sad about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. And then we'll go up to, uh, on occasion, Sacramento. It's been a while since we've been up to Sacramento. Mm -hmm. But you know, this is the the thing of a, of a cover band, right? You know, like, and the 10 piece band. So I got first I got a lot of guys to pay. So if we're gonna go That's somewhere, true. you know, is it gonna be worth everybody's time to get up there? Right. You know, so, and then, you know, if it's far away, we've never played it before, nobody knows us. Right. So, but we haven't done any uh, casino gigs all these years, you know, I've kind really? of poked around, never done one. Uh, that'd be kind of fun to do. Um, but yeah, you know, I'd say 90% of our life is 50 miles around San Jose. Oh, so, okay, and as far as traveling, so everyone pretty much commutes on their own. There's not like a tour bus or anything like that. No, gotcha. 50 miles each show up to the gig. Some it, it, guys are carpool or something. Right, right, right. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. What, I mean, what do you guys have to look forward to? What's the goal? What, what are you guys aiming towards? Um, it's changed over the years, and you know, the guys have their own uh, artistic goals. You mm -hmm. know, like to do creative things and you know, use this kind of interesting uh, lineup of musicians to make certain sounds to come out of their heads. I get that. You know, me, I, I always want to try and get the band in a position to be like the first call for big events in this area. Okay. Right. So we, we've spent a long time getting a good audience. Um, usually when we play, we bring a good crowd, a good enthusiastic crowd, nice people, you know, you know, come to the public events that we do and, and the private events. Um, so the goal for the band, I'd say always, uh, Always, when people think in this area, you know, we need something special to happen, our band should be the first they think of, right? If they want to add music to their event, or if they want to know that they want to draw, or it's some special thing, you know, and then those, by, by doing that, you know, always thinking that when you see the house record, it's got to be special, that kind of puts us in line for, you know, the corporate gigs that tend to pay got more it. for the, you know, and again, have my guys, this is their income. So, you know, those corporate gigs are good pay night, right? Got it. A good example, we last three years, well, two of the last three years, we missed the COVID year, we performed at the um, New Year's Eve event at Christmas in the Park in downtown San Jose. Okay. So that's a big thing, right? Like, like everybody knows Christmas in the Park. Absolutely. And so it was open, it was free to the public. Um, we worked with the nice people at Christmas in the Park. 9.30 we started, played until 12.15, did a countdown with everybody. It was a great party. Those are the types of things that, you know, I want it to be special when people see the House Rockers. Right, so, something memorable. Memorable. I right. mean, we try to do that with the show that we put on, but we want to put it on in places that will will appreciate it. So, the big the big shows, you know, we love going down to the beach, playing in Capitol is always a lot of fun. Nice. This thing that we have done in, in Oak Meadow Park, like I said, five thousand people. We've done uh, big Fourth of July shows. So nice. So when, when big events happen, and like I said, what it happens is we'll get calls by parents who want us for their kids wedding so it, it all feeds into Referral, each other yeah if you if you build a band that means something to people mm -hmm. you'll get those gigs that uh, people will enjoy oh that's cool i like that that's yeah. cool what about like like your rehearsals i wanted to talk mm -hmm. about that too as well like is it like a couple of days a week or how do you guys like plan that schedule that yeah so for years and years it was one uh it was one day a week from january to may so one one thursday one tuesday a night a week okay one night a week so every week 
from January until May, and then we would play so much in the summer that we wouldn't rehearse. Sometimes I'll send the guys a song and say, come ready, we're gonna sound check this, and if it works, we'll put it in the show. So we'll see, you know, sometimes you could tell a guy walks in and he's not ready. He's not so, ready. So that doesn't happen, but it happens on occasion as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we rehearse at our keyboard player's house. Um, we've been there, it's comfortable, it's, you know, we're in there tight, we take a break, we hang out together. It's social as much as it is work. My band is good, they, they work hard. I know? can tell, I yeah, can tell. You guys are polished, I checked it out. Yeah, Thank yeah, yeah. Thank Seriously, you. I, I could hear the professionalism, I could hear where you guys are like on it. Yeah, like, I, I'll tell you, Kimball, you know, I, I would be the least trained of all the musicians in my band. Well, really? But I am uh, probably the most business savvy. Mm -hmm. So, but being in a band with true pros who sweat the details of their parts, of their sound, of everything mm -hmm. about it, has taught me so much about how to be a musician over the years. I mean, stuff that I might have just you know brushed over and said, good enough, you know, my guys will hold me to account. And uh, it's taught me a lot about, about sweating the details. Discipline, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, absolutely. How long is your typical gig? Um, two hours is, uh, is most of the concert series, sometimes three hours. If it's a three-hour gig, we'll do it two sets. If it's a two-hour gig, we'll go straight through and play two straight hours. Oh, wow. That's what we do. You know, I, and I, it, that is a funny thing because my guys were like, you know, you take a break every hour. Part of the brand that I wanted was to be known as a hard-working band. Like, on stage or the band? Like no, no, rehearsal. on stage. I, like, when people come up and say, you guys play two hours without a break, you know, that's amazing. Right. I don't think it's amazing, but I appreciate the compliment. You know? Right. So, uh yeah, two hours, most of the concerts that we do, three hours are most of the private events and some of the things. And then the festival things can be anywhere from an hour to two hours. Rarely more than two hours for a festival. Got it. Well, you guys do more than one gig a day? Yeah, once upon a time. <laughs> Not anymore, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we did doubles, you know, for a while, but the, the money for the, for the pain is, didn't get to be worth it. Right, right. I understand. I understand. But but so in the old days, it was a thing. It was a thing. But but some of my guys will go do a solo gig and then show up for it. Oh, gotcha. For but not as the house rockers. No, no. We want all ten guys doing two in a day. I think one time we might have done three in a day. I don't remember. Sounds familiar. But uh, no. But guys will do a, a solo or a casual by themselves and then show up to a gig. Got and, it. Got yeah. it. Did you guys ever switch instruments? Yep. Our keyboard player. Um, we had a song. A Red Hot Chili Peppers song that that I wanted our which one? Uh, this was um, I like oh Red Hot Chili Peppers. Oh man, not important. Yeah, you got me, man. <laughs> anyway, uh, we had a bass player who uh, would rap. Really? Yeah. And so uh, I wanted him to be able to come out front and rap. And so our keyboard player Nick, he knows enough bass, and he got by on bass. And so we. Would oh, do that's that. cool. But I'll put the guitar down. Our sax player plays our tenor, alto, and flute. You know, he'll he'll rotate with those things. People will pick up percussion instruments in a show in different ways. Versatility, I yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. there's a lot going on. A lot going on. Yeah. I love it, Thank I love you. it, that versatility. Thank you. Paul, listen, it's always been a pleasure talking to you here on the Kimball Hooker Show. And I love your nostalgia, man, your whole vibe, the, the, your whole, uh, you know, your, your horror is just amazing. I can feel it Thank just you. talking to you. So I already know what it's like live on stage. I appreciate it. What is the name of your website again, just for all the people that's listening so they can check you guys out? Yeah, yeah. So the House Rockers website, www.sv, like Silicon Valley, svhouserockers.com. Okay, is there a phone number or email? Uh, Paul at svhouserockers.com if someone wants to contact me directly. Paul, all right. Paul at svhouserockers.com. At svhouserockers.com. Yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Once again, you're listening to the Kimball Hooker Show here in Los Gatos, Montes Arena. We're just signing off, and we just want to say thank you for tuning in. Check out our podcast and our special guest, Mr. Paul Kent. Thank you, for, sir, for coming on in. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you guys next time here on the Kimball Hooker Show. You just heard the Kimball Hooker Show here on KCAT Radio. Explore all our KCAT original programming at kcat.org slash radio.